this is the uh, angioplasty balloons there. Christopher Guest is a colleague of Dr. McDonald's and performed some of the procedures. It's a technique doctors have used for years to treat other problems in the arteries and veins. Do you think you did anything that's out of the box by trying this? If this was a risky procedure and there was uh, poor data to support its use, then this would be um, a little more questionable. Um, but this is a group of patients that are extremely debilitated, severely debilitated. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, the, the procedure is exceedingly safe. All around the world, patients are buying into this idea, finding physicians who will test and treat them. This is what I'm going to be bringing to my vascular surgeon. And then posting their results online. I've got 50% narrow in the right vein. They inserted a balloon. Here is the balloon. But doctors who treat multiple sclerosis say this rush goes totally against the rules of science, where theories have to be proven before patients are treated. Dr. Mark Friedman is the director of the MS Research Unit at the Ottawa Hospital. The link has not been made. The association has been made, but no one has convincingly shown that this association has anything to do with the disease. And until it's proven, stand by. Well, why would you, why would you fix something that may have nothing to do with the disease? Many neurologists are very skeptical of this theory. Dr. Friedman is one of the most vocal, at one point quoted as calling it a hoax. Why, when it came out, did you call it a hoax in the National I think I was misquoted on that. That's not what I said. What did you say? I mean, uh, the quote for the article said... Oh, I said, know what they said in there, but I, and I, I saw that and I but had it said, thought you know, about rewriting... We might spend millions of dollars chasing something that... That might turn out to be a hoax, is what I said. That's the level of, of uh, support that the research that has been published to date uh, gives it. There's not a lot behind this. He and other neurologists insist there should be no testing unless it's part of a study and no treatment until this theory's been proven. Your message... Whoa. Whoa. That's it. And the main message is, it's an idea. All ideas on the table right now are important because we don't have the answers. So until we have the answers, we need to have a wide scope of uh, understanding, a wide scope of belief. Dr. Friedman and some colleagues wrote an article highlighting the dangers of treatment, in particular a modified liberation procedure that uses metal stents to prop open the veins, which are prone to renarrowing. One patient required surgery after the stent fell into his heart. Another died from bleeding linked to medications prescribed following treatment. The Canadian patients were treated only with balloons in keeping with the Italian study. I don't think it's a, it's a dangerous procedure. And if you look at the complications that have been reported, the complications are, uh, regard, are related to stents more than the actual angioplasty. And uh, we certainly would never place a stent until there is data to support doing that. Most doctors agree this whole subject needs extensive research. But these patients don't want to wait. Why? Uh, with the damage that could have been done for the next, how long, ever long that the study could take, two years, three years, the damage may not be reversible. So why would you wait? Let us know what our risks are. Let us know what our choice is. And let us make the choice. And the choice that Mike Gandhi and his family made was to have the treatment, even though the improvements appear small. My speech got somewhat better. My balance somewhat better. His father, Tito, hopes it may stop his symptoms from getting worse. I'm not a medical professional, but I'm saying that, hmm, I've got something that's blocked in my neck, and if they unblock it, I get all kinds of sensations. If it has nothing to do with MS, I'd want to do that anyways. Sandra Black remains disabled by her MS despite her recent treatment, but she reports two improvements. Her once cold blue feet are now warm and she feels more energetic. I'm happy being able to stay awake all day and getting up earlier and the warm feet when I go to bed. But some people but would say those are such small changes. I know, but everything is bigger when you have MS. You know, and the biggest word I think is hope. 
Steve has had some of the most noticeable improvements. This is the first time he's been on a walk in years. You're not cured. No, I don't think so. There's some things I may never hit back, but I'm about 75% uh, better than I was before. That'd be a fair statement. Okay. But okay. these cases are called anecdotal reports. They don't satisfy science, which needs large organized studies to confirm if this is real or not. That's why Dr. McDonald and his colleagues are shifting away from treating patients individually to planning a formal research program. There's a phenomenal push from patients to try and get something done to improve their quality of life. Have you ever seen anything like this? No, I have not.